management. Hi. Hey. Can we talk? Go ahead. I mean in person. Well, I really don't have time right now. We Damon, I'm out in the hallway. I never called your girlfriend. What happened between us is exactly what I wanted to happen. Christine? And, and I shouldn't be trying to make you feel guilty. So I'm sorry, and I'm not going to mess up your thing with Terry. I already told her. You did? The truth would have come out sooner or later. It was better that you heard it from me. So are you guys all right? Things are kind of a mess. This apartment's a mess. How's business? Slow. Tough getting started when all you have is a lot of ambition and no real experience. I could put you in touch with a few people if it would help. I couldn't ask you for that. You didn't ask. Hey, it's Christine. Can I speak with Danny? <laughs> Some of your grades suggest that you have given up hope, but I haven't given up on you. So, I've arranged for a little outside help to prepare you for the next few exams. I'm starting to feel really bad about doing so good when Mike's so deep in the toilet. And I hope you'll take advantage of it. Fine. Everyone, this is Darlene. She's an honor student in the 10th grade, and she's going to be spending some time with us as a math tutor. It's her. Hi. I can't believe it. Uh-oh. So, you sign up to work with Darlene uh, after school. It's not required, but I highly recommend it for some of you. Who's interested? Come on, don't be silly. This is no time for jokes. Mike, Anthony. Samantha, come up to front, please. So much for feeling bad. Terry, Mr. Hart is here. He's a little early. Oh, yes, he is. Um, send him in. Okay. Mr. Hart, Daryl Hart. That would be me. Terry Joseph, thank you so much for making time for me. Sure. Here, have a seat. Oh, please. Okay. I feel like we already know each other in a six degrees of separation kind of way. Uh, yeah, I kind of see what you mean. The company you work for used to be represented by the law firm I'm now working for. And the law firm I used to work for is now suing you. <laughs> that about sums it up. Yeah, Daryl, listen, we're both very busy people, so I'm going to cut to the chase. Yours is a very exceptional case. Your former assistant is being represented by Green Norris, and she's the daughter of one of its founding partners. Yes, and that's why Rich Side hired the best defense lawyers in town. Actually, they didn't. The law firm representing you is kind of weak in the labor law area, which is why they tried to hire me, but I came here. Bottom line is, you want to represent me? Yes. I don't know. It's a little late in the game for me to consider switching attorneys. Even if I could talk Rich side into it. But it's never too late to decide you want to win. I can beat Green Norris. I spent six years mastering their strategies, learning how they think, safeguarding their weak spots. Your defense requires that someone know the opposition inside and out. Well, does my defense also require an ex-Green Norris associate who got thrown off the partnership track? Hmm. Listen, Daryl. Look, you don't have to explain anything. I know all about getting screwed. I admit there are a lot of reasons why I want this case, but the most important reason is that I know I can win it. Now, I've read your press. Last year alone, you raised $400 million in venture capital. You can't do that unless you like to win. Tell you what. Why don't you give me a couple of days? I'll talk to the bank. When I give them the information you've given me, I think they want Terry Joseph on the team. For this case, anyway. For this case, anyway. <laughs> I'll work on getting the rest of Rich Side's business later. Son. What's wrong? Why do you assume something's wrong? I'm not. 
Uh, we haven't spoken for a while, so I thought I'd just stop by and see how you were doing. I'm, uh, I'm fine. I've been working. Really? On what? Kind of hard to explain. Try. So you know. You made me look like a fool. What are you talking about? I'm in the middle of playing the best round of golf I've ever played in my life. Ed Patton happens to mention that my son asked him to invest in his new business. Dad. But you haven't heard the best part. Charlie Weber overheard the conversation. Said you'd asked him to invest a week and a half ago. I also asked him to give me a chance to tell you myself. Well, they didn't. I had to hear about it on the street. <laughs> I don't think your country club qualifies as the street. And none of this matters since so far, nobody's given me a dime. At the very least, you could have asked for my help. Shown me a prospectus, something. I really want this business, Dad. I just don't want it from you. Well, then maybe you don't want it bad enough. Great. I just uh, heard you're on the Ridgeside Bank case. Yeah, it just happened yesterday. Surprised you have time to eat? Shouldn't you be flooding my office with paperwork? Oh, I'm sure you'll find a few things waiting for you when you get back to the office. And there's more coming. I've reassigned a couple of my cases to devote more time to yours. Are you telling me that Green North is so intimidated by little old Terry Joseph that they allowed their top litigator to give more time to my case? Come now. Do you really think you can beat the firm that rejected you? I was the one who walked away, remember? And I took the whole Green North bag of tricks with me. Hey, Terry. I'm sorry I'm late. It's okay. Excuse us. Hey, sir, did you get our table? Mm -hmm. That was the enemy. The Green Norris lawyer assigned to our case. I, mean, I can go back and take it if you want me to. <laughs> I'm sure you could. You know, they've already started hounding my coworkers, previous employers, and even some of my ex girlfriends. Just look for dirt. Will they find any? Let me make this clear to you. I never harassed Melissa. I fired her because she could not do the job. Now, was there ever any talk that could have been construed as inappropriate? I'm not saying I never flirted with her a little. But she was into it. Did she say that? She didn't have to. Oh, come on, Terry. You know as well as I do. Women love attention. <laughs> oh, they do. They need it. It's a, it's a self-esteem thing. Oh, really? Just between us, I don't really see what the big deal is. The big deal is a $2 million lawsuit and a mountain of bad publicity. Well, the bank is standing behind me because they know I'm innocent. That's good to know. Sometimes I wish women could see themselves in the workplace. I mean, I've seen senior VPs stop to put on lipstick before they go into the boardroom. <laughs> or the director of finance jet out of a meeting because he's late for what? Some lunch hour haircut? That's not all women. <laughs> Most of you. From your uncomfortable shoes to the right perfume. No matter how insignificant or powerful a woman is, she worries about how she looks. Again, not all women. I'm just telling you what I've experienced, okay? Be that as it may, I can't let you express those views in the courtroom. Melissa was your subordinate, and that's all the jury's going to care about. Well, for folks like you and me, Terry, once we hit a certain tax bracket, there's nothing around us but subordinates. Let's order lunch. Okay. Hey, now I cannot eat another bite if you can believe that. <laughs> I can't. Mama, um, uh, please take these in the kitchen and put them in the mm. sink. Then can I watch TV? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Take hey, so, so how's it going down at the store, brother in law? Yeah, staying busy. I'm thinking about bringing on some more help so I can focus on the books. Do you want some coffee? Terry, huh? You've been quiet all night. What you got on your mind? Work. I've got this client whose whole defense against a sexual harassment claim is. Women need attention from men. Well, what? Well, I mean, some of us do like attention. So what? Why can't they just be treated like a fact instead of being treated like a negative fact? <laughs> Bird, what the hell is a negative fact? I don't know. Sounds like your wife has come up with a very confusing way to defend sexual harassment. No, 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 no. That's not what she's saying at all. You know, if, if I can speak for you, Bird, is that there is nothing really wrong with a woman wanting a man's attention. 
and you can make all the laws you want to, but none are going to stop men from hitting on women. See, that's exactly what I was trying to say. No, that is not what you're saying. Hey, yes, it is. It is. No, 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 no. Yes, it is. Every day, some guy is in my shop using his weakest pickup line on every stylist he can get his hands on. So what? It's no big deal. We laugh at him or ignore him, and it's over. No big deal? Who been hitting on you at work? Ooh. <laughs> Baby, I'm just speaking generally. <laughs> But see, look, wait a minute, that's the difference, Bird. The man that comes into your shop has no power over you. He can't threaten to take your job if you don't sleep with him. Exactly. This is the 21st century. A man has no business chasing his secretary around the desk. That's what the laws are there for. It is not that simple. Okay, some of these women are just as bad when it comes to men. I mean, it works both ways. Yes, it does. I see it at the store every day. Women love seeing a hard-working, committed black man handling business. Uh, excuse me, um, what women are you talking about? Body bird, I'm just speaking generally. Did you see this? It's from a mod's math teacher. He's failed the last two quizzes and she's worried. This doesn't even make any sense. Math is his best subject. Oh, yeah. Ken Kenny, have you heard a word I've said? Well, yeah, yeah, of course, baby. You said that Ahmad is in trouble and you need me to talk to him. Well, had a guess. Was it right? Could you please go and talk to your son? That's it. Oh, uh, come on. You got a second for your old man? Sure. So how are things going in school? Fine. And what about your math class? Don't want to tell you about shrugging your shoulders. Not to. All right, well, then speak up, then. Mrs. Briggs is hard. We get more quizzes in her classes than all my other classes put together. And plus, we just started calculus a few days ago. Well, maybe she's hard because she wants you to learn. Nah, I just think she's crazy. Yeah, well, maybe so, but your grades are slipping in math. And that's not okay with your mom and me. My friend Mike started using some new tutor. Maybe I need one, too. All right. Maybe so. Well, why don't we try this tutor and uh, see if it helps? Okay. All right. Oh, man. All right. Put that chair up. That was easy. Son? I thought about what you said the other day. About me not wanting this business badly enough if I couldn't come to you. It's just how I saw it. Well, if the offer's still out there... Of course it is. Good. Because I pretty much wiped out all my savings trying to get the company started. Well, that's a common mistake. That's why you never use your own money. See, usually I would say that venture capital is the way to go, except... Except the VCs are still trying to recover from all those dot-com companies that went under. They're sitting on their money now. And private investors are holding out, too. They took a beating on all these tech stocks. Oh. So you've done your homework. You know, I, I never asked this. How much you need? <laughs> if there's any way to avoid taking this matter to trial, I'd like to find it. However, we are prepared to file a $3.5 million countersuit against Ms. Green for defamation and slander. What? Don't worry, I anticipated this. Your public statements have seriously damaged an innocent man's reputation and reduced his future earnings. So now you're the victim? Your records show that you were a mediocre employee who got hired by Ridgeside Consumers Bank because your father gave the bank's general counsel his first job. You got transferred three times in 11 months and you finally ended up with a supervisor who wasn't afraid to terminate you. That'll all come out if we go to trial. Or I can try out your entire sexual history and build a case on that. Okay. You know, I think we've been very patient with your groundless drivel, but quite frankly, I'm getting bored with it. We agreed to have this meeting on the record. Now, are we going to get down to brass tacks or not? All right, I have a question for you. Uh, this is me getting down to brass tacks. Have you ever been to Jamaica? Don't answer that. I won't ask so nicely once I get her on the witness stand. You have no basis for this kind of question. Yes, she does. Melissa and I, we dated each other. 
Daryl. Tell him about the scrapbook. What are you doing? Look, you're the one that started all of this. She makes these little scrapbooks. Hmm. Made one while we were together. It's got pictures of us, letters, mementos, stuff like that. Sounds like something we need to take a look at. Personal photo album is hardly relevant. I want it, Doug. Then you better get a court order. Fine. I think we're done here. Hey, I need to talk to you. Uh, if you have anything else to say, Melissa, you need to do it on the record. Let's go. You dated her. Look, I know I should have said something sooner, but I was hoping she was going to get over it. I didn't want to embarrass her publicly. But you would risk embarrassing me instead. That was not my intention. You can't do this to me. If I'm going to keep representing you, I can't have any more tricks like this. You do not withhold information from me until it is convenient. Okay, okay. I'm sorry. Okay. Sit down, because I need to hear everything about this. Hey, Dad. Mm. Damon, it's on the counter. Wow. What's all this? Contract, a little official business. I sort of expected a check. Oh, we'll get to it. it. Says here your money's an investment. And you get 50% ownership of my company? At which point it becomes our company, and I'm still going to be a silent partner, except where legal matters are concerned. Slow down, slow down. I thought he was going to give me a loan. Bank's loan. I invest. You know, you could have told me you don't trust me. If I didn't trust you, we wouldn't be doing this. If anybody but your father had been generous enough to invest in this little venture of yours, they would have given you the exact same terms. I'm not signing this. <laughs> I thought you said you really wanted this business. I do. <laughs> then I strongly suggest that you keep your expectations reasonable. You can make demands later when you start to assume some of the risk. I'm risking everything. I put every penny I saved in the last three years into this. For you, this is just another write-off. Well, you call me when you're ready to do business like business. Well, hello there. Hi, I'm Darlene. The math tutor? Well, come on in, Darlene. I'll get Ahmad for you. Ahmad, your tutor's here. Hi. Hi. You ready to get started? Yes, the dining room's right this way. We should do a quick review so I can see where we need to start. Okay. I already worked out some sample problems, so we can go over some basics. You should go kind of slow. Cool. Just let me know if anything confuses you, and I'll make sure that we back up and take it slow. I know you'll be fine once we go over some basics. Use a double angle formula to rewrite each expression. To be honest, she really isn't such a good tutor. But I already know this stuff. Who can think about differential calculus at a time like this anyway? But Doug Pirelli is here to see you. What? Yes, now I told him he wasn't on your calendar and that you were very busy, so why don't you just give me the pleasure of sending his slimy ass packing? Now, Gloria, I shouldn't have to remind you to be professional. Sorry. Now you can show his slimy ass in. Mr. Pirelli? Please. Come on in. Hi, Doug. Drop the counter seat. And we'll settle. Daryl admits no wrongdoing, and Melissa gets her job back. Along with undisclosed and compensatory damages, I'm sure. <laughs> she only wants what's fair. Not about what she wants. Mr. Green sent you over here because he knows I have a shot at winning. Frankly, he wants justice for his daughter, but he's also interested in preventing her public humiliation. Or you found out that your little princess is a liar, and you want to spin things a little to make it seem like I would be doing my client a favor by settling. As I recall, that is the exact same tactic that Green Norris used last year with the Robertson Steel case, a case they knew they couldn't win. Terry. <laughs> you can keep your settlement, Doug. Don't you want to discuss it with your client? Don't have to. I already told him you'd try something like this.
You know, I just had the fondest memory of your early days at Green Norris when I was training you. You know, you still have some of the same weaknesses. I'm going to enjoy exposing them. Oh, 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 I guess this is the part where I'm supposed to crouch in the corner and wonder what's wrong with me and then spend sleepless nights trying to regain my self-confidence. Been there, done that. I'm ready to kick your ass in court. You know what's interesting to me? How passionate you are. Considering that no matter what happens, you still won't be a partner at Green Norris. You know what's interesting to me? If you lose the case representing the boss's only daughter, you won't be partner at Green Norris either. Everything you needed. Oh, I'm sure you did. And thanks. I can't believe I have my time to go to the store. Well, give yourself a break. You're working full time while trying to start a business. What's that? The contract for my father. You know, it's part of ownership of the company in exchange for investing. I just can't figure where he's hiding how to screw me. He's your father, Damon. I'm sure he's not looking for a way to screw you. No, he's just looking for a new way to control me. And I can't find it because I'm not a damn lawyer. Well, why don't you get your lawyer to look at it? I will. But they don't know my father. And Terry does, so... Maybe I should have her look at it. Let me get this straight. You had a girlfriend, slept with me, she dumped you, and now you're looking for a lame excuse to ask her for a favor? You don't know her, Christine. I think she'll help me. Well, I may not know Terry, but I do know women. And if you think for one minute she's going to help you, you're crazy. Hello? Hi. How are you? Fine. Good. Um, I thought uh, you might want to know that I'll be at your firm tomorrow. I'm meeting with Mara to discuss some contract stuff. Why would I want to know that? Why? Well, um, I was thinking I should give you a heads up, you know, in case you uh, want to avoid seeing me or any kind of <coughs> awkwardness, I guess. You're free to go anywhere you want. You are not obligated to check in with me. Well... I just figured we might, um... Well, there's no need to figure anything. Okay. I just laid out how I feel. Okay. Good night. You missed the Van Adams. Leave us your info. <clears throat> Bird, Terry, hi. I know it's last minute, but I really need you to squeeze me in at the shop first thing tomorrow morning. Okay? Call me. Bye. Yeah. Hi. Good to see you. I'm late for court. I won't keep you. I just need to ask you something. My father drew up a contract for investing in my company. Mars looking at it. That's good. Well, I was hoping you can take a look at it, too. Me? You can bill me, of course. Bill you? Is this the same Damon Carter who didn't want me involved in his business? Who was afraid I might take over? I never meant it like that. Well, why don't you get Christine to help you? I'm sure she'd be happy to look over your contract and give you legal advice in between romps in the bed. Sorry I bother you. So am I. Oh. What in the world? What are you up to in here? Nah. You know, your father and I are so proud of you. Working so hard to bring your grades up? Thanks. Now, you just promised me that you're going to stick with it. I promise. Okay. 
Is there anything bothering you? Nope. So, the only reason why your math grades are slipping is because calculus is just a difficult subject. Yeah. Okay. Well, your tutor will be here real soon. Cool. A scrapbook, is it? That is correct, Your Honor. We believe it'll prove that the plaintiff was engaged in a consensual relationship with Mr. Hart, so that this case is nothing more than a scorned lover seeking revenge. This is irrelevant and needlessly invasive of an innocent young woman's privacy. The book impeaches the statement in the plaintiff's complaint. And counsel has refused numerous requests to turn the book over because it proves that his client lied. I have no patience with uh, discovery warfare, Mr. Pirelli. Why haven't you settled this? Because it's absurd, Your Honor. My client's personal effects won't add any new information to this case, and they won't alter the fact that Miss Green was terminated after she ended a brief relationship with her supervisor. Your complaint stated that there never was a relationship between the defendant and the plaintiff. Well, that's true, but that was before some new information came to light. New information that clearly underscores the value of the photo album. It's worth a look. The motion is granted. Uh, Mr. Pirelli, turn over the photo album by the end of the day. I've got it. Hi. Who are you? Theo. You a mod? Where's Darlene? Over oh, book. She's really in demand right now. Yeah, I bet. A mod? Aren't you gonna let him in? Hi, come on in. Nice to meet you. I better think fast. It's either spend the next hour with this guy or my book report. What? I just remember to have a book report due tomorrow and I better get started. Oh yes, yes, you better get to it. But first, you're gonna spend an hour with your math tutor. Right. No wonder you're having a hard time with math. You're running from it. You're not gonna do me much good if you work yourself to death. Hi, Daryl. Hey, Terry. I was just in the area. I knew you'd be working late. So, I thought I'd bring you a little brain food. Oh, but thank you. Yeah. Hope you like sushi. Yeah. Oh. You're just like me, you know that? Always working twice as hard as everybody else. <laughs> Means a lot of late nights, huh? And eating on the run. <laughs> you got that right. You know, as long as you're here, I, uh, I want to ask you something about your case. Okay, go ahead. Well, I'm concerned, because so far, the case against you isn't very strong. Well, that's a good thing, right? Yeah, but they would never take it this far unless they had something up their sleeve, you know, like something they were saving to spring on us during the trial. Do you have any idea what that could possibly be? Not a clue. Yeah? Because I just don't want any surprises in the courtroom, Daryl. Terry, I'm the one whose future is on the line here, so trust me. If I thought they had anything on me, I would tell you. <laughs> Wait, and, and then what happened? The doorbell rang and Ahmad went flying down the stairs. I thought he was going to break his neck trying to get to the door. But when he saw that funny looking kid standing there, Kenny, I'm telling you, you should have seen your son's face. Where's Ali? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, he had no idea you switched the two to the other. I'm telling you, he had no idea. Mm -mm -mm. Maybe next time he'll keep his nose in the books where it belongs. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know what? We really shouldn't be laughing at the boy like this. I mean, you know, a first-time crush at his age is very serious business. Yeah, I never thought about it like that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> the defense moves to dismiss, Your Honor. This case can't possibly go any further. On what grounds? Well, the plaintiff has not only failed to present any documentation of workplace discrimination or harassment, but the only evidence put forth has been the uncorroborated allegations of the plaintiff. Now, we have provided proof of an ongoing consensual relationship which shows Melissa Green to be a liar. Daryl Hart is a known womanizer. He preys upon the women in his workplace. I've spoken to half a dozen such women just this week. They've been afraid to come forward. This case must proceed to trial before he strikes again. We will subpoena these women and they will testify. Therefore, we further move for the dismissal of the defendant's countersuit. It's frivolous and a waste of the court's time. The plain truth is that when the plaintiff was terminated, she became a scorned lover who was seeking revenge. Then she mounted litigation that false claims had them spread all over the media and seriously harmed my client's reputation. Accordingly, we wish to move forward with the counterclaim. I heard enough. The plaintiff has presented no 
credible evidence of harassment. In fact, all evidence points to a consensual relationship. The defense motion dismissal is granted. And further ruling in the defendant's favor with respect to the countersuit. It's clear from all that I've heard in this court that the defendant's reputation has been damaged. Therefore, I am ordering reduced damages in the amount of one million dollars. Oh, oh. All right. Thanks so much. Okay. I think this is the part where you say, nice job, Counselor. Nice job, Counselor. Thank you, Doug. Congratulations, Sir. Thank you, Mr. Green. Why do I feel like I need to apologize? Because you're decent. Mm. You're ruthless, unpredictable, <laughs> single-minded, but you're also decent. Thank you. Good luck. Do you too. Hi. Oh, hi. Um, we have this really big math test coming up, and you need to help me study for it. I can't. I'm really busy now. can be that goofy. Oh, forget girls. I'm going to the library. Forever. Damon? Dad, thanks for coming. Can I have a glass of water, please? So, do your lawyers look over the contracts? Yeah. What is so horrible about being in business with your own father? I can't work with you over my shoulder every day. You reminded me that I turned my back on the family business. I spent all these years trying to get away from that, and I don't want to end up right back there. Ever since my kids were young, I had these big plans about us all working together in a family law firm someday. And your sister's there, and I know your brother's going to join us when he finishes at heart. It's my way of carrying on the family name. But you're not interested. So, what are we ever going to do together? I don't know. What do I have to say? What do you want to hear that's going to make us okay? It's not what you need to say. It's what I need to tell you. It's what I need you to know. Us not getting along is not my fault. I still want from you what I've always wanted. To be a father who accepts and supports me for the son that I am, not the son he wishes I was. Well, I guess we have to start somewhere. Might as well be at Carter Management. We might as well. I want a two-year buy-sell provision so I can buy you out the minute I make a profit. Two years, but if you don't, we are partners for life. That's a deal. Melissa, how's you getting here? You can tell that bastard he is not getting a dime of my father's money. You have no right to come to my office. You helped him do this to me. You're probably fucking him. I'm not in the habit of sleeping with my clients. Now, if you're not going to leave, I'm going to have to call the police. You're not sleeping with him, are you? It was not supposed to happen like this. Him suing me and winning. We did not talk about this. Hey, hey. Okay, when was the last time that you spoke to Daryl? Privately, I mean. Um, a day or two before I filed the lawsuit. He told me to keep my story straight and then everything would be fine. He knew that you were going to file charges against him? 
Yes. It was his idea. To sue the bank for $2 million? Yeah. Oh, my God. Wait a minute. Why did you go along with something like that? Brazil? <laughs> um, we were going to live there together, and all we needed was money, so he came up with this plan, and I had to let him fire me so that I could make a sexual harassment claim against the bank, and then Richside Bank would pay me to settle the case against him. And then he changed the plan? As soon as he hired you. He stopped taking my phone calls, and that's when he filed that stupid countersuit against me. And we did not talk about any of this. So now he gets a million dollars of my father's money, money he does not have to share with me. And I have nothing, nothing, and even my family wants nothing to do with me. Did you tell your father about any of this scheme? How am I supposed to tell him why he lost a million dollars? I don't even know why I'm telling you. It's okay. It's okay, okay? It's all right. 